Hi Mayans and welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time watching, I'm Melody Maya and I talk about everything in my transgender, lesbian, and asexual life that you would really like to know about but are afraid to ask. I did it right the first time. <sighs> wow, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> Today with me, I have a special guest, and this is Gemma Lux. Hi, everybody. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Gemma. I am a cisgender woman, and I am straight. That's that's okay, right? Okay, yes. <laughs> okay. No, honey, there's okay. nothing wrong with being straight. Okay. No, I know. No, I don't I know, know if you that. know that. But no, I mean, like, you say, know, that's the word. I wish you guys that's... would be less straight sometimes. <laughs> I am sometimes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Tampa, born and raised in Tarpon Springs. I am 36 years old. I'm a Gemini. Aside from doing makeup, I'm a professional pole dancer. So I teach pole dancing classes. I travel and, do, and perform and I used to compete. I'm no longer competing. Now I just help people with their competition routines. Gemma obviously is also the makeup artist. I am a Les Vixen as well. That's so right. I am. She also has her own channel. So I'm going to put all her information down below. Please go and follow her. And I'm sure you'd be open to giving advice to trans women. Absolutely. Right? A thousand percent. As you can probably see, I don't have a stitch of makeup on right now, except for a little moisturizer and sweat because I am nervous as shit. I've done my own makeup, Bare Minerals Foundation, because it matches I my like Bare Minerals. I, I, have okay. nothing, I have nothing against Bare Minerals. Really good. What would be like the basic elements that we should go and look for, like in makeup? So when you think makeup, you want to think skin as well because you want to have a good base. You need to have moisture onto your skin so that everything applies nicely and smoothly, especially if you have dry skin. And even if you have oily skin, because if you do not moisturize, your face will overcompensate and, and produce more. Depending if you have uneven skin tone, sure, maybe you want to put some foundation on your whole entire face. It just yeah. depends yeah. on what you're comfortable with. I have vitiligo, so by definition, it's uneven. <laughs> I'll be honest, like, I know this, this is going to sound like... You, you like the way it looks? I do, yeah. because it's like a contour. <laughs> I know, it's hard to accept our flaws, flaws quote but, unquote, but, but yeah. But for me, I put concealer on just basically the center of my face, okay? So I'll put it under my eyes, down mm -hmm. the bridge of my nose, my chin, and forehead. And then I just buff that out. It covers my dark circles. I even use that as an eyeshadow primer. I try to be as simple as possible. So yeah, moisturizer, either foundation if you want, and concealer. If you want a bronze, get a bronzer. Put some color back to your face. And also, mm -hmm. I even just kind of use it for a little bit of like evening out my skin tone. You don't have to calm contour, and then blush highlighter and an eyeshadow palette. And, and done. Yeah, I know it sounds like a lot, but really, yeah. I could show you like in my hands <laughs> what you could use. You don't need a lot to create, you know, you know even a glam look. If it works, it works, you know? <laughs> I'm not fancy. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of brands that I really like, mm -hmm. aside from Bare Minerals, she brought Sorry. her little packet here. <laughs> this is Born This Way by Too Faced. They have a really nice line, but I really like NARS Sheer Glow. How do you spell that? N-A-R-S. That is a really lovely all okay. over foundation. It does have a little dew to it, so it's got some moisture. Primer that I like to use from Benefit, it's called The Pore Professional. It blurs out your pores. Put it onto your fingers and you wanna pat it into the skin mm. and then sort of just work it out because you're trying to fill in the pore area. So like, you know, right. uh, for me, I'm very oily, so my pores are larger. Or you can take estrogen and your pores will get smaller on you. Maybe I should, I think I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. <laughs> really? For those of us who yeah. want a little bit of glow, backlight priming filter. And this is from Becca. It's a really good brand. I really love all of their highlighters. And this one is Instant Complexion Refresh. You'd want to put this under your foundation, especially this one that glows, because when you put the foundation on, if it is a flat matte foundation, it'll yeah. add some vibrance. So when you put it on, you'll have a glow. I would probably use this with more with like a liquid foundation. One thing I learned from drag queens that they'll tend to use like a, a yellow kind of base layer at some point um, mm -hmm. because that yellow tends to cancel out five o'clock shadow look from coming through on their makeup. You would put on your moisturizer, your primer, and then you would put on that yellow tone concealer, then go on with your foundation. If you have dark circles under your eyes here, mm -hmm. you put the yellow, that same yellow that you would use to cover here. Also, you can always use like a reddish tone, blend that in, and then you put the concealer and then green cancels out red. So if you have red on your skin, you put green on first. Now with all those products you were just showing us, where would I get those? Ulta or, or Sephora. Uh, or between, online. At or, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could just do it online as yeah. well. My BFF Dawn who talks about how hard it is for her to put eyeliner on. Mm -hmm. When you're applying your liquid liner or whatever, yeah. you'd want to angle it to the side. The application should be easier. Build up the line. Absolutely. It kind of makes things a little more smooth. And then I also always have a Q-tip with some like, makeup remover Perfect. on standby to like yeah. any area parts. Some concealer on the back of your hand and a flat brush like this. Just 
paint it off, you mm -hmm. know? And just go, make sure you work upwards. It won't smear the black, just make sure it's dry when you do it. I'm always like, okay, where do I apply it? Do I apply it over the lashes, under the lashes? You can put actually put it in your waterline, ah. right? So you can totally put liner in your waterline and under along your lash line. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can smoke it out and you'll be fine. You can do it both on both. Without further ado, I'm gonna take off my glasses. Let's I assume I should it. take off my glasses. Okay, so what are we applying oh, right now? Right now I'm applying with just some moisturizer. So 50 years old, this stuff is starting to crack. If you don't know how to control fallout, the powder falling off the brush and onto your skin, I say as a beginner, do your eyes first then do your everything else. Great tip. My other tip was your look is not going to look complete when right. you just have eye stuff on. You can get away with like lipstick and go. Yeah. Not like eye makeup and go. I always start with brows first. First of all, what kind of brush are we using here? So okay. This is an angled brush and this is from Morphe. It's the M165 brush. This would be a great brush to, to line with. So especially when you're trying I, to- I don't even know how she found that. There's like a trillion <laughs> brushes in there. It's like a mechanic when they open up the thing. There's like a billion like wrenches and they go, oh, there's a three quarter. I'm like- yeah, that was so good. <laughs> And so you want to make sure that when you get a brow brush, it's not a thick one. This one is great as well, but the thing is, is like it's a little thicker. And so what I use one of these brushes for is for powder. After I've done my liner or if I've used pomade, I go over with a powder okay. to set it. This will cover more area. You can just use a pencil, like a brow pencil, or they have pomades. Pomades are very long lasting. This one is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This pencil is from uh, Billion Dollar Brows, mini universal brow pencil. A brow is probably for a beginner, a little bit more user friendly. It just takes practice. Let me just get some of this out here. Like a palette, an artist. Yes. But this one sometimes I like to put in the back of my hands to warm it up. Another tool that you want to have when you're working on brows is a spoolie. So in a lot of brow brushes come at the end of it has one of these. Anastasia Beverly Hills, the pomade. They have an amazing brush. That's the one you should get. You want to brush your brows out. Yeah, I, I, I worked on my brows yesterday just for you. They look great. <laughs> Thank you. When you look at your brows, you want to make sure that the inner corner is mm -hmm. basically in line with your inner corner of your eye, okay? So don't extend the line past so that point. Try not to go, yeah, try not to go in past the, your inner corner. A good way to, to kind of like measure like where your art should be is you get a pencil and from the outside of your nose, kind of angle up over where your iris is and that's where your arch should be, which is exactly where Maya has her arch. Mm, yes. Good genetics. Uh huh. <laughs> so for the outer part, you want to make sure that when you line it from the nostril mm -hmm. to the end of your eye, that's where you end. So a lot of times people's brows, they end about like here. So you have to extend it, you know, the end of the eye here. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good way to measure like where everything needs to be. Do you want me to get chairs? Okay. All right. So to move my entire setup around. You can tell I am not Nikki tutorials. So when we're doing brows, we brush them out. And then from here, what you're going to want to do is start from the under part. I'm just going to define this line. Like so. Just depends on your brows. For my eye, I don't really have to do a lot of work under there. Once you've hit that, you're going to want to start with the upper part of the brow. And this is where the arch comes in. I'm gonna go here first. Draw the line. And so if you ever make any little mess ups, I use concealer to clean up after. And you know, always keep a Q-tip on hand. So once you make your lines, you, know, you define where you want your arch to be, you start to fill in, brush them out just to make it look softer and keep going. I don't really give people like that Instagram brow. I just kind of always follow people's natural brows. And then when you get to the inner corner, I like to make like little brush hair strokes. So I just draw like so. And you can also in this little inner corner right here, mm -hmm. so you can take the, the brush, it's, it's flat right there and go just flick upward, right? Cause you don't want to have like block brows where it's like a big square right here. They even make pencils that are so small that you can paint the hair. Yeah. When it comes to your brows, brows are sisters. You know, they're not twins. Much like breasts. Yes. Welcome to my tutorials. I'm using concealer right now to clean up and to make it look more sharp and defined. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the brows alone from here okay. and I'm just gonna use the rest of that concealer on the lids. And you can use concealer as an eyeshadow primer. If I did wanna use a primer, any of the Urban Decay primers are awesome. There's okay. one that's called like Eden. It basically washes out just like what I'm doing with concealer, just the even skin tone out. So when you're doing eyeshadow, you wanna have at least one brush that's clean. So I'm gonna use this um, Morphe M505 brush as my clean dome shape. 
fluffy blending brush. I have this smaller brush from Morphe. It's the M506. And so just look at the difference here in size. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. The difference in size there. And so this is another blending brush. So this is going to be for, especially for people who have smaller eyes, you're going to want this brush as your blending brush. And then now here's another, just same thing, another blending brush. Just the bristles are a little different. And so this is what I'm going to use to actually apply color. And then I'm going to clean it up with this. Now I need to set her eyelids. What you want to do after you do the eyes and you and you prime them with whatever you choose, you want That's to always a setting set. setting powder. This is a setting powder that um, drag queens taught me to use. And just use that clean brush because it's, it's, it's a translucent setting powder. So you actually can use translucent setting powder to fix any mistakes that you make with your eyeshadow as well. I actually have a setting powder for like my derma blend. Yes, I, I love derma blend. So when you apply shadow, if you don't set and you just do like the concealer or the primer, when you go to apply, it won't apply evenly and it'll skip. Now, this is a, a palette that I, from Viseart. I'm gonna use this all over her eyelid right here, this light, the lightest color. I'm gonna go all over the lid and up to the brow bone. And this is a not a shimmer, this is a matte. I find with doing makeup, the most common eye shape that I come across is a hooded eye. When you open your eye, you may not be able to see the lid. Now what we wanna focus on is a transition shade. So okay. the transition shade is going We're to be- We're all about transition on this channel. Yes. So let's do <laughs> So in this palette, the transition shade could be like this one or even like any of these like darker lighter, brands. yeah, all the other darker colors for like working that outer V to make it to add more depth. But right now the transition shade I'm gonna use to define the crease area. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. go in with this lighter color, take the brush, I'm gonna place it in and just wipe it side to side, right in that crease. Now, if you, again, if you have hooded eyes, you have to create your own crease. I don't wanna put it up here, okay? So you wanna keep mm -hmm. this whole like area clean of product and when you're holding your brush you want to make sure you hold it at the end because we're trying to get like a, a, a airbrush look so you want to hold it softly and gently apply side to side i'm going to bring it down a little bit as well so notice how i'm bringing it down towards the lash line okay, i'm going to get that clean brush and i'm going to blend to kind of buff it out and make it look smoother from here i'm going to go in with a little bit of a darker color we're literally making a v right in this area right there. And if it falls down and you make any mistakes, it can be fixed. So up and you wanna work your way down towards the lash line and in making that V. See how it's like, yeah, that outer, oh, I see, that outer yeah. portion there. So I've just been blending and buffing out the edges so it looks really smooth. I went back in with that transition shade. So I'm bringing that in to the lid a little bit. I think one of the things that I, I think trans women are kind of intimidated with makeup about is this idea of precision, that it has to be perfect in some way. It's okay if it looks like, holy crap, when you first put it on, it, it should look like kind of a mess. <laughs> right. And that's why you have this fluffy, clean, fluffy brush to clean and buff and move it around, move the product around. So now from here, I'm gonna go in with a shimmer and I'm gonna take this palette here, Spiciate London. I love this palette. It's got really beautiful like metallics. When you're doing metallics, anything shimmery, you need to use your finger. Another good tip. Yes. Okay. Just use your finger, circle it around in the palette, and now when you're applying, you want to work in and just wipe it on. It's amazing to me how much makeup is finger painting sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can use your fingers to do the whole thing if you want. So now that I've applied the shimmer, now notice I'm not applying shimmer up here. So if you have hooded eyes, you don't want to put shimmer up in this area here. It's going to bring your hood down. You want to always keep it matte there. And now I'm going to go in with a little bit of a lighter shimmer and I'm going to place that just right in the center of your lid. It's like a spotlight. It just brings light to that area. It looks really pretty. <laughs> it just looks really pretty. Translucent powder to fix. How many brushes do you have? A lot. I just stopped counting. I need a lot of brushes as a makeup artist because I need to be able to have the same brush repeatedly. You can even put glitter just right on the center as well. Glitter? I could do, if you want. <laughs> Who doesn't like glitter? Do you want some glitter? Why not? Oh. I'm using glitter primer from NYX. Whenever you apply glitter, you want to have something for it to adhere to because otherwise it's just, it's just going to kind of poof everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to place a little bit on a brush. You can even just use your finger. Tap it on. If I mess up, I just put glitter over it. When in doubt, glitter. Yep. Always makes everything better. You can choose to do glitter before you do your eyeliner or after. Sometimes the glitter can get in your way though, like if you're making a nice straight line. All right, now we're gonna line. From Maybelline, actually. Maybelline? Yeah. Drugstore brand. I love, I love this stuff. When you're doing your line, you just wanna make sure you keep it close to the lash line unless you wanna make it really big. To clean up the area, you can either use makeup wipe mm -hmm. or you can use micellar water. And so that's what I use, Violet. I use this exact brand, this exact bottle. Garnier Fructis. Skin active micellar cleansing water. And it's pretty cheap. 
Yes, I'm lifting up the product so it came down a little some. I'm actually using my finger to sharpen up the edge. I feel like I should be in a kabuki theater. <laughs> <laughs> And use the concealer. This is gonna brighten everything up as well. I'm gonna use a small little brush this is from Real Techniques. I just wanna get all really close to that lash line. For the foundation, we use Temp 2. And Temp 2 is usually an airbrush foundation, but use a brush and put it on. I don't own any sponges. I probably should. Yeah. I don't usually blend things out that way, so. You can always switch it up, try, see what it's like to use the uh, liquid. They make some really nice liquid foundations that kind of are really powdery. Do you have any um, advice for matching skin tone? Yes, when you're trying to match to your skin, look at your neck or like the inside of your arm here. You want your face to match the neck. Right now, it's very light because I'm using this as like a, a highlighter. So when I do the foundation over it, it's still going to be bright under the foundation. Look all the way up. This is a highlighter okay. that I'm actually going to use to um, highlight the inner corner to open things up and just make things even more shimmery. And usually you would put this on the cheeks, which we will do in just a little bit. Am I pretty yet? You were pretty before. Thank you. I'm gonna go in and now do your lower lash line. Okay, we're gonna just enhance it just with, by putting some powder there. So I'm gonna go in with that transition shade first. And by setting, it's gonna make your makeup last longer mm -hmm. and also help your application of all the other products on your cheeks. One of my favorite brushes to use for contour is a fan brush because it gets right in the cheek, right in this area here. Mm -hmm. You use this for highlighter and for contour. And it tickles. I'm gonna just take this lightest color here in this palette, it's a Morphe palette. I use this as bronzer and a um, contour. Now, when you're contouring ear starts here, you wanna think about finding the cheekbone. So right under the cheekbone area, mm -hmm. right in there. And that's where you're gonna to wanna to place the contour. You don't wanna bring it in all the way this way, but this is kind of like the, mm -hmm. all the way to the outer corner. And also, you always wanna work upwards, not down. And so I'm using it as a bronzer as well. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it up, and bring it into the temple. And if you feel like you've gotten too much on, you can always, you know, blend. So I'm also going um, to bring it over the forehead here. You know, you wanna make sure you don't have a white line going on. So if you have that, just brush the product like into the um, hairline. And what does bringing it up into the forehead do? It just warms you up. If you have a larger forehead, mm -hmm. it can make your forehead look smaller. But you don't really have a large forehead, so Thank you. you have a nice size forehead. <laughs> Oh, go on. <laughs> oh, again, I'm using it kind of like as a blush as well. I'm gonna put it on the nose to warm everything up and do the same thing on the other side. You have really nice features. Like your cheekbones are great. Thank you. Yeah. I have symmetrical features. Yes. I'm going like full glam right now. So using a white in your waterline is going to open your eyes and make them look bigger. Now I'm using a Q-tip just to dry off the waterline. If it's wet, it's just gonna come off easier. I'm just gonna fold down and you can just look away yeah, there you go. You have great lashes as well. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you want thick lashes? Because I have them. But I can show you to see what you look like. You can. Okay. You want to okay. know? I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Spray your face real quick. Go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror. Look at me. Awesome. I think it looks beautiful. Can I open my eyes? You can open. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm just working. I'm just working over here. Here you go. Fake lashes. OMG. I love that I was your first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You were my first. Totally. We're done. I'm just going to add some oh. mascara to your top lashes just to connect them. If you want to reuse your lashes, put mascara on first, then apply your lashes. Take them off, put them in a little case, wash and reuse. This is a really good setting spray as well. This is the All Nighter, which oh. is I'm also going to spray in your face because okay. it's freaking awesome going to make the makeup last longer and the powders blend into each other. So the mascara will do what to the fake eyelashes? It's gonna connect your real lashes to your fake lashes. So long. You know, I had to have some compensation for being born with a penis. <laughs> sure. All right, so we're almost done here. Now she's going to put red lip on me, which I really like. Yes, and this, is, this lipstick is from NYX. Tap your lips together. Yes. Let's let the hair down. Gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> so this is me with a full face of makeup applied by a professional like Gemma Lux. I'll have to put on my glasses so I can see them better. <laughs> Thank you so much to Gemma for being here today thank and for doing for this. Me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna put all of her contact information below. Follow her and, and see what she's all about. Believe me, I follow her Instagram story. It's a very interesting story to follow. <laughs>
there's probably a lot of puppies and kittens and stuff too, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> but there's also a lot of pole dancing there is. And, and like over splits and things like that. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video, please put them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to have them answered for you. As always, my socials are down below. And if you have a dime to spare, please consider giving to my Patreon. And on that note, please like my video by giving it a thumbs up. Please share this video and please subscribe and see you around in the webs.